Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting from the Rotax Engine Factory in Gunskirk in Austria. You know, in the U.S. we tend to think of Rotax as an aviation engine company, but in reality they are a recreational engine company. In the factory behind me, they make more than 200,000 engines a year, but only about 7% of those go into aircraft. The rest are used in the ATV, marine, and motorcycle markets. For this video, Rotax has given us unusual access to the aircraft assembly line so we can show you how these engines are built. Let's take a look. Before we look at the engine shop, let's get an aerial view. This is a big factory and the aircraft engines account for only a small portion of it. They're assembled here in what Rotax calls Building 1, which dates to 1947. They recently stenciled the name on the roof to celebrate Rotax's 25th year in the aircraft engine business. On the mass production side, there are two assembly lines like this one, and at peak production, a new engine rolls off every three or four minutes. Most of the manufacturing volume is in the motorcycle, snowmobile, watercraft, and ATV markets, including Bombardier's own sport vehicles, such as this Can-Am Spider. BRP's Skidoo line of snowmobiles are also a force in the recreational market. And demand for those products is what built this a massive state-of-the-art engine manufacturing facility that's highly vertically integrated. Although Rotax is located in a region in Austria where steel making and manufacturing are concentrated, Rotax does almost all of its manufacturing operations in-house, from crankshaft machining to heat treating. That capacity has a spin-off advantage for the company's aircraft engines because it offers some economy of scale and automotive grade quality control which is otherwise difficult to maintain in a low volume manufacturing. But where snow machine engines are built amidst the clatter of the main factory, aircraft engines are assembled here in building one in an area not much bigger than a large house and by a small team. When we visited last summer Rotax had a ceremony to celebrate its 50,000th aircraft engine. Those guys in the red shirts? That's the entire aircraft engine assembly team. They build every aircraft engine Rotax delivers on this bench in a series of hand operations that take about 90 minutes from start to finish. Assembly begins on one side of the shop where sub-assemblies such as the oil filter adapter, the gearbox, the ignition module, and the cylinders are built up first and provided to the main assembly line as they're needed. The cylinders are two pieces with a water-cooled head bolted to the barrel. Each one gets a careful leak test. Think of a Rotax 912 or 914 engine as kind of a cross between a small horsepower Lycoming or Continental and a motorcycle engine. It has a split case with opposed pistons, but it also has an integrated flywheel mounted alternator and ignition system, plus a gearbox. In this shot, a case half is being prepped by lubricating the bearing shells. Build-up starts with the crankshaft, which, unlike traditional aircraft engine, is a multi-piece, pressed-together assembly. Connecting rods are single-piece with no end caps. Here, a technician is checking crankshaft runout with dial gauges. Like any aircraft engine, the 912 is built from the inside out. The crankshaft goes in first, then the cam, and then the cases are closed and torqued. And speaking of torquing, it's generally done at Rotax with electric wrenches that permanently record each setting in Rotax's file makers. Each engine is built both physically on the bench and virtually in the file makers tracking system. Once the case is closed, it moves to this section of the bench where pistons are put on the rods and the cylinders and heads are installed. Compared to a Lycoming, Rotax pistons are just tiny. The bore is only 3.1 inches. The pistons are made in two sizes for a best match to each cylinder and they're weighed to be within two grams of each other. That assures better running balance and smoothness. The cylinder heads go on next, slip down on the same studs that hold the cylinders. Throughout this process, the assemblers use all sorts of jigs and fixtures. This one keeps the two cylinders exactly aligned during cylinder torquing. The gearbox is next and this part is interesting. There's actually not much to the gearbox, just three gears, a big flat spring, and some special fasteners. Rotax engines also have another interesting component, a clutch. Actually, it's a dual mode clutch. In this shot, you can see the angled dogs that allow the prop to slip just a little to isolate it from the torque pulses of the engine. The overload clutch, shown here, protects the engine in case of a prop strike. The 500 refers to 500 newton meters. 
the clutch's release threshold torque. Another thing interesting about Rotax engines is that they don't have a lot of gaskets and seals. Really metal to metal surfaces are sealed with a soft setup seal. It's actually a Loctite product. As the engines build up, they're moved along the bench by hand on travelers from station to station. In this shot, the engine is getting some of its accessories, including the oil filter adapter and the water spider, which distributes coolant to each cylinder. As the engine nears completion, it literally goes around the bend on the assembly bench and into the final assembly area. Here the technicians tend to the alternator and ignition installation, the fuel system and the carburetor fuel injection system, and engine mount ring. One of the last components to go on are the electronic controls for the ignition. The completed engines are given a final dressing and inspection in this section of the shop, and then they're moved into the test cells for initial testing and break-in. All of the engine's Rotax builds are operated before they're shipped, but the aviation engines get the most thorough ring out, running for at least an hour. All of the parameters are checked and recorded and live in that engine's file for the life of the motor. For quality control, a few engines are routinely disassembled and checked for unexpected wear. Rotax also has a couple of R&D cells for testing propellers. If the engines pass muster, and it's rare that they don't, the oil is drained, the engine is cleaned up and boxed up for shipping. Next stop, one of more than 200 aircraft manufacturers Rotax supplies. You can find a detailed report on the Rotax engine factory in the December 2014 issue of Kit Planes magazine or at kitplanes.com. For Kit Planes, Avweb, and Aviation Consumer, I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching.